How's it going, Steve? Excellent. All right. I see you got something new for us to see. Yeah, this is the uh, the first 914 with the Boxster S gearbox in a traditional small block Chevy. Um, so it allows retrofit of, of all those 914s throughout the years that, that are still running a traditional small block as opposed to the LS, which we pioneered the Boxster S training. Excellent. How was it? It's really neat. Um, it, it changes your perceptions of a small block uh, car because it, it gets through the gear so cleanly. Um, the shift quality is, is just superb. Click, click, click. Um, just like the, the actual Boxster, it gives you that sense that um, it's just seamless. You, you're not working very hard. Um, the lightweight of this car is even in more dynamic than the Boxster because this weighs probably 800 pounds less. So it's just super, super nimble. Uh, the gear ratios uh, work really well. It, uh, first gear is usable, uh, sixth gear still gives a nice highway cruise. Uh, so all around, really nice setup. Excellent. So tell us a little bit about the car. Can we see the shifter? Yeah, it's really neat. Um, we haven't built a console for this. The customer's still kind of deciding what he wants to do there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, stock Boxster S uh, stuff here. Uh, shift knob, uh, shifter, even the cables. So it's, it's really pretty efficient because you're using mostly Porsche parts, uh, which can be sourced from salvage or what have you. Well, fantastic. Well, show us the engine. Sure. All right, so look at the engine. This is a warmed up small block Chevy, uh, probably 420 horsepower or so. It's uh, recently had an Edelbrock fuel injection system fitted as well. Uh, it's the new uh, Edelbrock system that uses a handheld tablet for tuning, which is uh, pretty neat. It's got an auto-tune feature, um, relatively straightforward to set up, and it gives you uh, fuel injection quality without the, the carburetor, obviously. Um, Still can use a carburetor, obviously. Uh, my car runs a carburetor. They can be set up really well. But for those who want EFI, it's available, and the prices are coming down quite a bit on that. It used to be three, dollars $4,000 to do an EFI retrofit, and now this is twenty five, dollars I think, for the parts. All right. I'm sure some of our customers would love to know more specifics about the uh, small block that you have underneath here. Give us the uh, numbers, if you wouldn't mind. Absolutely. This started off as a, a standard ZZ4, which is a great baseline performance engine for a 914. Uh, really close to the limit if you're running a standard 914 gearbox. Makes for a really fun, fast car. By going with the Boxster S Tranny here, we're able to uh, increase the power a bit. So now we're probably 420 horsepower or so. You've got AFR heads, an upgraded cam, uh, different intake, um, and Edelbrock's fuel injection system. Uh, one of the neat features is it's got this uh, the sump that's a new item for them. It allows you to run a dual fuel pump system which uh, helps maintain fuel pressure in aggressive driving situations uh, or hot ambient temperatures, that kind of stuff. Um, and it worked really nicely, really clean, uh, fits in here perfectly and, and that's all from Edelbrock. So, neat stuff. Um, real happy with it. It's, it's a real spry, very, very fast car. <laughs> So tell us a little bit about what's going on up here, Steve. Uh, traditional 914 uh, Renegade cooling system. This is actually an older one. This this car's been around for a long time, so it's gone through some different evolutions, but e even a slightly older cooling system still works really well, very similar to what we're producing now. Um, obviously, Optima battery with a creative mount on the firewall, stock 914 fuel tank. One of the new features is a GPS speedometer. Works really, really well. Uh, very accurate, uh, very seamless. It, it simplifies the whole process of using a third-party speedometer, I think, really well. So why did this car come back to Renegade this time around? You know, it, it was finished. It was a really nice car, but um, just with our development, we keep coming up with new and creative ideas, and we came up with a Boxster solution for this, and uh, the owner was game for it, so we retrofitted it. So it's gone back and forth uh, several times between here and the East Coast. Uh, he drives it for a season, and it'll come back here for some upgrades, and now as we get into driving weather on the East Coast, it's due to go back. Excellent. So um, I understand that uh, you and Sam, you did a little tour down to Southern California, Sam being the customer. Tell us a little bit about it because uh, all I can say is I see a lot of bugs on that car right now. Yeah, it's uh, very practical. So it did. It did a round trip to Southern California. We were doing some brake prototyping, so it's got one of our new brake kits on it. Um, that worked really well, so we were working with the manufacturer down there to dial it in. Um, real seamless trip. I mean, that's, that's a fairly long trip. A lot of sustained higher speeds. This does really well. Um, having it cammed where it is comfortable in that, you know, 2,500 to 3,000 RPM range, which you'll frequently be cruising at high speeds on the freeway, just worked out really, really well. Fuel economy is pretty good. Um, really just a nice, fun car, very flexible. Well, Sam says that you guys are carving some canyons pretty hard with this too. Sounds like you're having a good time. Yeah, I mean, that's the neat thing about it is, is it's still a really light, nimble car. Uh, we haven't sacrificed that. I think a lot of people get the impression when you put a, an iron block, small block Chevy in one of these, they become a boat, and it's just not the case. It's still comparatively way, way lighter than almost all other performance cars. So 
you get the vintage styling, but you also just get this awesome nimble handling where you're really comfortable throwing the car around a little bit, especially being mid-engine like this. Um, you're just in control uh, and you can you can exploit that in a canyon carving type situation. You can push a little closer to the limit than you could in maybe a newer car that you're not so familiar with. Fantastic. Well, it's a good looking car. Obviously de needs a bath, that's for sure. But uh, looks like you guys had a really nice time. Yeah, it's not a garage queen. You know, it does get driven quite a bit and it does see track time uh, back on the East Coast and it'll see a lot more in this upcoming season. And I mean, it's going to surprise a lot of GT3s and stuff going down straights. Uh, I'm not going to say it can necessarily hang with them in the corners, but uh, on the straights, uh, it's going to be all they can handle. Fantastic. Well, Steve, you are the general manager of Renegade, right? I am. And, uh, Love the 914s. This is a really fun car and I look forward to building more. All right, fantastic. Well, this has definitely uh, been another experience of building this car. It's been a lot of fun. We appreciate Sam Corper, who has uh, been one of our best customers. We certainly have so many good customers and we really love this car. So there you go. Another Renegade 914 small block Chevy, six speed Boxster S gearbox, fuel injected. Yeah, you don't get much better than that. We also have the LS conversions and Subi conversions as well. You know all about those, I'm sure. Again, thanks for checking out Renegade Hybrids. And Steve, thank you very much for uh, kind of giving us a tour of this car. You did a great job. My pleasure. All righty.